May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be to the greater honor and glory of God. Today is we hear the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. One of the things that always drove me nuts about living in our 100 year old house on Locust Street is that it was constantly dusty. Part of the problem is that it had original double hung windows, so it was always drafty. But the primary issue that I think is that Mount Vernon is just a naturally dusty town. Now, before you get offended, I said dusty, not dirty. I could power wash and clean off the front porch in the summer, and within a week, it was hard to tell I'd ever washed it. I recently had another thought about dust. Lydia and I have lived in our current house for over three years. The windows are more modern. They can, they can be a little drafty, but not nearly as bad as that 100-year-old house. So I was standing in our bedroom, looking at our king-size bed, and the thought occurred to me, I wonder if it's dusty under the bed. The bed hasn't been moved since we moved in, and the bed sits low, so it's hard to climb under or clean under. Then that thought gave me a flashback to when I was a small child. Whenever I was sad or frightened, I would crawl under a bed and hide. My mother was never the most conscientious house cleaner, so I would always come out from under a bed covered in dust. Being covered in dust is a reminder that we are the stuff of dust and dirt. Living in the Locust Street house reminded me that trying to avoid dust or eliminating dust completely and having it always return, that I was fighting a losing battle. This is a metaphor for life and death. We are the stuff of the earth. We are the stuff of creation. The name Adam from the creation story of Genesis is pronounced in Hebrew, Adam, and it literally means dirt or earth, soil. When I first became a priest and started having to officiate burial service, I wanted to be a stickler for following the burial instructions. In the committal that takes place at the grave, the prayer book rubrics, rubrics say, Then, while earth is cast upon the coffin, the celebrate says these words, In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother or sister, and we commit his or her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. There those words are again, dust to dust. The problem with this rubric or instruction is that it doesn't take into full consideration a modern day burial. This language of bygone days when a wooden casket with the body was lowered into the ground and the, and the fill dirt was immediately shoveled back into the grave, covering the coffin. In that situation, it makes perfect sense for the minister to cast dirt upon the coffin. And in many instances, members of the immediate family were invited to cast dirt into the grave as another symbol of closure with their deceased loved one. It wasn't until I started being present with the family at the funeral home when they were asked to pick out a casket and vault that I realized that casting dirt on the coffin really didn't make sense. The pristine casket, which is quite expensive, is lowered into the burial vault and sealed with a secure top then lowered into the ground after the family has departed the gravesite. Casting dirt on the casket was introducing a foreign substance. The reason for the vault is to protect the living from the dead. 
One of the books I vividly remember reading in seminary was called Open Secrets. It was the true story of a minister called to his first church in Cairo, Illinois. The parsonage house that he and his wife lived in was at the base of the cemetery hill of the church. Many of the graves were over 100 years old or older. The parsonage was supplied with well water. The author imagined drinking the essence of the church's ancestors as the, they leached down the hill into the well. Like Adam, we are the stuff of the earth. We are dirt and dust, and whatever else was in the drinking water. We are not just covered in dust, like was I was when I crawled out from underneath the bed. We are more than dirt. We have an, an eternal soul. During Lent, we honor the gift of life. We thank God for the gift of life. One of the prayers of a burial service asks God to make us deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. It's often a kitsch saying that yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift from God, which is why we call it a present. I've heard many people refer to the season of Lent as a downer time of the church year. It can feel that way and seem that way. We surrender ourselves to the dust. We live in the blessing of this fleeting day and live into the promise of eternal life. Lent is a time to celebrate the blessing and the value of life. Death and dust win the battle, but our souls are victorious with faith, faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.